So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here since I was a clinical engineer in 1971, so I guess that's what Ernesto says. Uh, I'm a grandmother, I guess, of clinical engineering, um, but still practicing. So you'll see this system is the result of at least 25, 30 theses of my uh, PhD and master's students uh, at Carleton University and University of Ottawa. And I have a real partner in a hospital, Dr. Barisiak. And that's the secret, by the way. The answer to get data is you need a medical partner. And I have many, many databases, millions of cases, because I have many uh, medical partners. So I was able to study a lot of things. Here we have 20 babies. And we're collecting data in real time from these 20 babies in the intensive care. So I'll talk to you today about uh, what we're doing with all this data. Of course, it's big data. We don't have to say that. I guess it's obvious. Um, so we collect the data from all these patients, from monitors, from ventilators, from the lab results, from radiology. And um, we send all this to a clinical data repository. And then we adapt <clears throat> our outcome estimation system to processing real-time data, because we did practice for years and years with databases that were static. You know, they were real data, like we had 24,000 cases of Canadian babies in intensive care that we developed our systems with. But now we're working in real time. And so we developed the physician-parent uh, decision support system so that it, and this is unique in the way that there are systems for physicians, there are systems for parents, but we combine both in a module for parents and a module for physicians. So the uh, data repository design was marvelous. It was done by uh, Jeff Gilchrist, who is part of this paper. And Jeff was my PhD student, and now he is uh, an adjunct professor at Carleton. And he's continuing to work with me and, and our students. So he used MySQL and Entity Attribute Value Format, which is extremely efficient. Now, we have papers in 2010 that showed uh, how we compared this with all the other systems that exist for data repository designs, and you'll see uh, in that paper why um, this is the best. And this is what it looks like. We actually, because, you know, data, it's impossible to get data unless you have a medical partner and a really complex contract. We have a contract for every database we have. It's almost sign in blood, I can tell you this, because of confidentiality and everything. Uh, so what we have done is we are scrubbing the data right away before it comes to my computers at the university. So the computers at the hospital have the real data and the clinicians can do research with this, uh, but we also have it uh, so that we can develop and continue to update the system. So we use decision trees and we saw before in other papers all the existing you know, uh, vector machines and all that. We have found in trying all of those that decision trees were not really as good, but we tried, uh, it, they are good for some things, but the artificial neural networks, um, perceptron, are still the very best for what we do. So we were estimating mortality, will this baby die or not? And of course, we also <clears throat> want to use um, this system to see what complications are coming along before they actually they are there. Uh, length of stay, ventilation, and sepsis. Now we're doing all of those things with static data, but now we're moving, we're estimating mortality with real-time data, and we're moving now to do the complications in real-time as well, with an alert system, of course. So we've evaluated, that was a long time ago, and then we presented this um, at uh, several conferences. Then the outcome estimations, we had by that time early on 85 million data points uh, from 634 infants. They have about that many per year uh, cases. 
And we looked at that mission, 12 hours, 24, 48, to see, you know, what is it that gives us the very best uh, information. We did five times two cross-validation approach, pre-processing, of course, of the data. And then we developed the PPADS uh, module for parents and for the physician. And I'll give a little bit of details on that. So for the uh, module for the parents, we applied the international uh, pa um, f the uh, patient data, um, the patient decision support systems. There's an international standard, and that was the basis on which we developed our system. We did a usability study with eight parents of babies who were in intensive care and five neonatologists, and the results were outstanding. They said, when can we put our hands on this stuff? So they really wanted like yesterday. So let me, because we, I'm between you and lunch, I guess, I can just go a little bit faster. Uh, the mortality estimations are extremely uh, high, 99% for the true um, outcomes of um, survival. And the sensitivity, of course, is a bit lower because that predicts the mortality. Um, and then we have, of course, the positive uh, predictive value and the negative predictive values. And this met our clinician expectations. So the next steps then is now we need to do a usability study with more parents and in any case, uh, a parent who wants to use the system, no matter if the baby survived or died, or, and especially the current ones. So we're finalizing currently now the prototype and we're just about to do clinical testing. So again, the clinical data repository is there and it goes to the prediction modules. Then you have the physician module and the parent module. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the physician module. The physician can see all the cases in one go and they can retrieve the data just by clicking on that baby. And then they retrieve all the data that we have collected, um, whether it's lab or x-ray or or monitoring the heart rate and all that. And they also click to see if the parent wants to see the information, they can click to make sure the parent has access to the parent module. And uh, the home page um, for, has current conditions, current treatments, outcome predictions, decision support aid, and a glossary. Now, you know there's some very difficult decisions to be taken when the baby is not doing really well and the, the physician would recommend to remove intensive care and let the baby uh, just go to palliative care. So they want to do this decision with the parents. So the parents, they can go in 24-7, uh, they can find out all what's going on, they can ask questions to the physician, and they also, of course, have interaction with the physician a couple of times a day. So, uh, but we call that a collaborative care decision. And in Canada and US, this is becoming now a, the primary model. So for the parents, when we do the prediction, we say, for example, we show this uh, 100 uh, cases and the number of cases that died. Um, this is a very visual system just so that they know what the probabilities are. It's good for the physician as well, because the physicians say um, they're not as good or as fast in prediction than um, our model is. So I'm not gonna go through all the windows, but uh, you'll soon have them um, in online because we're just about to go online. So I'll just do a conclusion. Uh, the CDR uh, de-identifies the data that we see. Um, it uses open source tools. We don't want them to start to buy MATLAB at the hospitals and everything. It's easy to collect, to store, and retrieve the data. The ANN performed better than decision trees, and we want to expand, as I mentioned before, to IVH, BPD, necrotizing enterocolitis, uh, all these other, uh, and we'll have alerts and warnings. Warnings will say, okay, something's happening, and an alert will say, you must really look after this. 
we already do now some trending actually of the ECG uh, of the heart rate and we trend the SAO2, the saturated oxygen levels in the blood. And so we have alerts for those already that are working and the physicians really like that. So I think that um, the future is, uh, you know, to expand maybe to a multi-site uh, multi uh, study. And we're going to do a study at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario in Ottawa starting in January. Um, and after that, we could expand to Montreal, Toronto, and other places in the world. So, um, but th thank you very much for your attention. And if you need to know how to get data, talk to me. I've got lots and lots of databases over time. And uh, it's very, very difficult, but it's possible. And it's the only way to really, really get good results. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monique. So your paper is open for questions now. Please, Sophie. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Um, my question concerns the ownership of the data. The way I understood it, if I'm correct, then it's owned by the hospitals or the physicians. And my question is, how come it is up to the physician to tick whether the parent can see the data for their child or not? Why is it not by default that a parent would have access to their child's data? That's a very good question. And first of all, yes, the data, we, it, agreement we signed, the data belongs to the hospital. We use it to train our systems, and then of course we let the hospital use our system. Um, the, um, the parents, many parents, they just don't want to uh, use a system. Uh, I don't know if it's many because we haven't asked um, a lot of parents yet, but we think it should be, as soon as a parent says, yes, I would like to use the system, then the doctor can just click on that baby and then they will be able to see everything that's happening to their baby. And I think that's important because they'll be able to understand how the baby's doing. And if things really go downhill, it's not going to be ending in court like some cases we've seen uh, because you know they'll see the degradation and they'll be able to discuss everything with the doctor. I think it's a system that can be very helpful for the parents. If I had a little baby at those, I would like to use a system. Yeah. Thank you. One more question here. Thank you so much for this very exciting presentation. Um, I have a question regarding, you said, we met the physician's expectations. So were their expectations regarding the level of quality of the result or expectation regarding usability or both? Well, it's actually both, but um, we did first ask what kind of, uh, of sensitivity and specificity they were expecting. And once we knew that, then we were working to improve our system to meet that level, which was around 65% sensitivity and 85% um, specificity. And then the usability, uh, because we had eight parents, I think uh, seven of parents were totally, totally uh, enamored with the system, uh, and the physicians as well. They, it went really well. So now they are asking us to, to give them the system as soon as possible, but we really want to do now with the real time, you know, a real clinical study. Well, it'll be more of a pilot, not the full clinical. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's one more question down there. Thank you very much. Um, I'm from England, and we have three or four million people accessing their records now, and it's becoming more popular. Um, we have a process in family medicine that when a patient wishes to access their records, and we promote it very actively, we ask them five or six questions about them seeing data that might upset them, about seeing data uh, when, when they're on their own. And I don't know if you know Holly Witterman in, in Canada, but I'm now working on a task force with the European 
Laboratory for Federation of Laboratory Medicine looking at disruptive technology and patient engagement and we're trying to look at a sort of nice pathway to change the way that uh, the data sharing works. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for this. I'll follow up on you. I don't know. It is. Well, does that mean it's over? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. Don't be shy. Well, thank well, you very much. I'll be here uh, until after lunchtime, and then after that I'll be at the gala tonight. And I've just written my memoirs. I should just say that they're coming out tomorrow uh, with Amazon.com and uh, the Ottawa U Press. So it's all the good, the bad, and the ugly of my life and my career. So thank, thank you. you.